Hi everyone, it's Derek here from Adumed. In today's video, we'll take a look at cow's milk protein intolerance. This is quite a common condition that we see in our pediatric population and it's due to the body abnormally reacting to the proteins found within cow's milk. Now this differs from lactose intolerance, which is due to the body's inability to break down lactose, which is the sugar that we find in milk. So cow's milk protein intolerance can be classified as either IgE mediated versus non-IgE mediated. Now, the way we classify and we differentiate between these two is basically based on the timing of symptoms. So with IgE mediated calcium protein intolerance, reactions tend to occur quite quickly within minutes and up to two hours after exposure. Whereas with our non-IgE mediated calcium protein intolerance, this tends to occur two to 72 hours after exposure. Things that increase the risk of this condition include our children with a history of atopy, our male patients, and those with a pre-existing food allergy. Calcium protein intolerance can present with multiple symptoms. Now our symptoms that are usually associated with our acute IgE reaction include angioedema, urticaria and pruritus, as well as shortness of breath and a wheeze. Multiple other symptoms may be seen, including atopic eczema, reflux, amongst others. If an acute IgE reaction is suspected, we could consider referring the patient onwards to a &E or the paediatrics team, depending on how acute and severe the symptoms are. Otherwise, in our non-acute patients, we could consider referring them onwards to the outpatient setting to an allergy clinic, where they might have a skin prick test, and also other testing may be considered, including a IgE blood test. So we can consider referring onwards to a dietitian whilst awaiting specialist input. Now to our moms that are breastfeeding, it's important to review things. If the child was asymptomatic whilst being exclusively breastfed, the mom does not need to exclude dairy from the diet. However, if the child was symptomatic whilst being breastfed, we need to support them through the process of excluding dairy fully from the diet. Dietitians are also really important because they can monitor growth, advise on a cow's milk protein free diet, and also give a bit more tips about other meals and other foods that have all the vitamins and minerals needed to support continued growth and development. So let's now move on and have a think about our further management of this condition in primary care. Extensively hydrolyzed formulas are usually first line. They are made from cow's milk, but the proteins which cause a reaction are broken down into smaller pieces. Amino acid formulas are the next line. These are made up of amino acids, which are the building blocks of the cow's milk protein. These are given if there are reactions to extensively hydrolyzed formula. Soy-based formulas should not be used in our children under six months old and should never be used first line. Thinking about other milk drinks, such as oat milk and almond milk, these have less nutritional value than cow's milk. Therefore, they should not be used as a child's main milk drink under the age of one year. So what about our lactose-free milk? Well, remember that in cow's milk protein intolerance, our body is abnormally reacting to proteins within cow's milk. So these proteins are still present in lactose-free milk. Therefore, we'll still need to avoid lactose-free milk in this condition. So that brings us to the end of today's video. As always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. We've taken a look at how you assess and how we manage our patients with calcium protein intolerance. Make sure you check out the rest of our videos, especially our pediatric playlist for a little more knowledge within the topic area. Until the next time, I'll see you soon.